Kevin Gray, Mavs Radio Network with ESPN NBA writer Tim Bontemps, part of the Hoop Collective as well, along with Tim McMahon and Brian Windhorst. Mavs down three games to none, Tim. In your thoughts and the way that you've seen this series, how have we gotten here as far as this series is concerned? I mean, look, at the end of the day, Mavs have had an incredible season. They've just run into a really bad matchup and a much better team. And the uh, Boston Celtics won 64 games. They had a net rating of nearly 12. They could become one of the eight teams in the history of the league to win 80 games and have an 8% winning percentage over the course of the regular season playoffs combined. There's a great team and a really bad matchup for Dallas because they have the ability to attack Dallas at both ends of the court in ways really no other team can. They've got three or four elite defenders who they can throw over the Dodgers and Kyrie Irving. And at the other end of the court, they've got five guys at the court just about all the time who can attack Luka in particular. It's obviously dealing with some injury stuff right now. And you can see him wearing down as the games go on. And Celtics are just a relentless, aggressive team at both ends of the court. They're getting up a ton of threes. They're sticking with their process. And as a result, they got themselves one away from the time. What did you learn in game three about both of these teams? The way that the Mavericks were got down by 21, made the 22-2 to two run to get it within one. But Boston just continued, as you talked about, with the relentless effort, continued to put things away in the end there. Yeah, I mean, look, the, the Mavs had an incredible start to the game. They're up 13, seven minutes in. You think, man, maybe Dallas can really do something here. And then the Celtics dominated the next 29 minutes of the game. And just when you thought the game was over, the Mavs come right back on that 22-2 run, hold the Celtics to one field goal over eight minutes, really give themselves a chance to get back in the game. But the Celtics in the past might have wilted in that spot. And instead, they posed themselves, they got themselves back on track, they completely shut down Dallas's offense once they got to within a couple of points. They had one field goal over a five minute stretch in the middle of the fourth quarter. Dallas could have got ahead, and I think if they got ahead, that game probably ends differently. But they never quite got ahead. Celtics were able to extend that lead a little bit, made just enough plays to win. Like I said, now they're in the pressing position. Luka Doncic fouls out with four minutes and 12 seconds left in game three. And obviously, the tone and the tenor of the game change. What have you learned about him throughout the course of this final so far that maybe that you would not have gleaned throughout the regular season without having seen him on this stage in particular? I mean, I don't know if there's much that I've learned. I mean, Luke is arguably the best player on the planet. He's one of the two or three best. He's had an unbelievable season. He's obviously dealing with a bunch of injuries. And, well, look, he's a guy that is playing in the finals for the first time and is learning what it takes to get those final four wins, right? There's a reason why tend to see people get to this stage and then struggle and then come back and win. Happened to LeBron James, happened to, uh, happened to Jason Tatum, you know, he's come to him and Jalen Brown, have come back in this series and won again. Happened, you know, it's happened over and over again through the history of the league. You see Dirk Nowitzki, obviously, right? Um, should have probably said him first. And obviously Dirk and the Mavs had a tough series in 06, had the disappointment in 07, fought their way back, get back in 11 and win. And like, that's typically the nature of the NBA playoffs is what makes the NBA playoffs really fun for me to cover and follow because you see the full arcs of teams. And Celtics two years ago and last year when they lost in the conference finals as a favorite, they were in the place where the Mavs are at the current moment. And now they've come full circle and they're on the precipice of winning this title. And that is certainly in the future, I think, certainly for Luka and the Mavs, like Luka Doncic good as he is, he's going to have more opportunities, and you got to look at this as a learning experience as the entire group, and for Luke in particular, I think especially from an emotional standpoint, that's something he'll learn over time, but I mean, the guy's going to go into next year as the favorite to win MVP, and he's had an incredible playoffs, and I don't think anything happens in this series changes. Last couple for you, we know what the numbers are in terms of teams being down three games to none, and never having won a series, 156-0 I believe is the number. How did the Mavericks find a way to extend this to a game five based on what you've seen through the first three games here? I mean, look, I saw the Celtics nearly do this last year to the Heat. And obviously they were the favorite and they had home court advantage, so some of that is different. But the way you have to do it is to look at this as a one game at a time thing. If you try to complete a comeback in one, you know, try to get four wins in one, you end up losing, right? All they got to do is worry about winning a home game. Win a home game tomorrow, then they go back to Boston. He's got to win one road game. Then you come back and win one home game. You get a chance to win the series. So you got to break it down into bite-sized segments and just focus on what's in front of you and not think about the rest of it. Because you think about having to win four in a row against a team like this, you're kind of beat before you start. So you got to just think about winning one, playing like they did in the segments of game three for larger stretches, and then see what happens after that. 
Last one for you. What has defined this series for you based on what you've seen in the first three games, whether it be offensively or defensively for either one of these teams? Honestly, the Celtics just finally putting it together. This is a team that has played more games over an eight-year span in the playoffs about winning the title than any team in history and been through everything. And they had a couple brief lapses in concentration in game three that nearly cost them, but they – they, they're finally getting to the mountaintop. And to go back to what I was saying before about having to go through stuff and learn stuff and deal with stuff in the playoffs, this team has dealt with a lot. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown in particular have dealt with a lot. And, uh, you know, I think assuming they do pull this series off, I'll be happy for them that they do finally get there and they're not, you know, it's one of these teams that's like, oh, well, they just never won when they've had all of the success. And it's, it's the cool thing about seeing these playoff runs, and I think at some point in the future when Luke is back here again, I suspect we'll be having the same conversation about him learning from this experience and carrying it forward, because two years ago, Boston looked like Dallas in a lot of ways against the Warriors, a team that had vast amounts of playoff experience and everything about winning the championship, and the Celtics are up 2-1 at home in game four, they let that game get away, and they want to lose the series at six on their home court, right? And... In this series, they have looked like the experienced veteran team that's been here before, that knows what it takes to get here. And Dallas has looked like a fairly inexperienced team, which is totally okay. They are a young team. They don't have a lot of experience, and it's going to only serve them better in the future. He is ESPN NBA writer and part of the Who Collective. Tim Bond, Tim's going to have to join me here on the Mavs Radio Network. Tim, thank you so much for the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Right, thank you. Today's video is brought to you by Aura. Do a Google search on your name and email address to see how much information comes up about you. I was devastated by the amount of information that I could be seeing searching my name and profile, and I knew then I needed to be protected for not just myself, but also for my family. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Or shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it protects me from hackers who could use this information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, and other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect me and my family from online threats that I can't see. It's really easy to set up, so I don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. I get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one of these tools already, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work to protect me and my family so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. I value my privacy and I value yours. You can go to Aura.com slash Kevin Gray to start your two-week free trial. Please see the link in the description.